Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be presenting Lesson 3 for September the 18th, 2022. We're still in Unit 1 entitled, God Calls Abraham's Family. Our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is Persevere in Times of Difficulty. Our devotion reading is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 11, uh, verses 25 through 32. Our background scripture is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, uh, beginning at verse uh, 22 to verse 32. And that is our print passage today uh, that we will be studying from Genesis, chapter 32, uh, verses 22 through 32. Our key verse reads, The man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and, and have overcome. That's taken from Genesis chapter 32, uh, verse 28 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to understand how Jacob experienced blessing as a result of an exhausting and extended struggle with a stranger. Secondly, to anticipate blessings to emerge from struggles in life. And then thirdly, to uh, persevere in life's struggles and wrestle with them until blessings result. We have just two outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, Struggling with God. And our second outline is entitled, Struggling with Self. And we certainly thank and praise God for the privilege of being able to share uh, God's word with you. We thank God for each and every one of you, for your families. We certainly are praying for you. And we certainly want to encourage you to uh, get your Bible engaged with us with a narrative that uh, you should know quite well and uh, be prepared to take some notes uh, as the Lord would provide. Uh, and so we just want to just talk to you a little bit today about um, some issues that uh, we all have faced and perhaps you're currently facing them now uh, and that has to do with struggling. Uh, struggling with, with God uh, and struggling with yourself. Uh, we want to be able to make some points today that uh, uh, would help us to understand uh, why we struggle. Um, we certainly uh, don't like it. We don't, we don't like to experience discomfort, but it is a part of life. It is a part of our walk with the Lord. And it's certainly a part of this narrative. So I want to begin by reading some of the biblical context that uh, is provided in our lesson. And then we're going to move on uh, to uh, engage this lesson. But our biblical context is as follows. The events in Genesis chapter 32 occur 20 years after Jacob's mother, Rebecca, orchestrated his departure to Mesopotamia as protection from Esau's murderous rage against him for cheating him out of the family blessing. That's in Genesis chapter 28. But after his uh, hasty flight, Jacob experienced his first encounter with God and received confirmation as heir of the Abrahamic covenant and the promise of God's presence wherever he would go. Uh, although Jacob then vowed to make the Lord his God, he repeatedly fell short of establishing an intimate relationship with God and continued to be the trickster and schemer. I just want to stop right there. And I would encourage you, uh, uh, as you read this narrative uh, of Jacob's life, that you would go back to at least chapter 27, the book of Genesis, and then continue through chapter 32 uh, so you can get the full account of, of, of why Jacob is struggling. Uh, you all know the story uh, all too well. Uh, as we read, uh, Jacob uh, was prone to 
schemes um, as a trickster if you will uh, to gain the upper hand he was involved in deception um, his mother was was involved in deception uh, and even over the course of time uh, as our lesson uh, uh, context shared with us uh, some 20 years later the matter of him cheating uh, his his brother Esau had not been resolved uh, and so God allows this situation to progress until we pick this lesson up this narrative where uh, Jacob has spent uh, years away from home but now he is endeavoring to go back home and he he recalls what he has done to his brother Esau and quite frankly he is afraid of confronting uh, his brother uh, obviously uh, because he has cheated his brother out of out of his heritage out of his blessing and Jacob is in a position where he does not know how his brother is going to receive him keep in mind that uh, uh, Esau vowed to kill his brother for what he had done uh, but you know when I was reading this lesson and studying this lesson and I know that we are familiar with the term breakthrough uh, we've heard that term in the church uh, for years and Jacob is in need uh, right now at this posture he is in need of a breakthrough and I want to read something to you and then we're going to get to uh, the first outline so we can understand the position that uh, Jacob is in now that he is endeavoring uh, uh, through all of these different events to go back home uh, to take his wives to take his children to take all of his possessions but he has some issues uh, he has some skeletons in the closet if you will uh, that haven't been brought out but as he considers uh, his condition and his circumstance he talks to God about this matter in the in the 32nd chapter of the book of Genesis and I want to just go down to verse 11 because uh, uh, Jacob is asking God for something in verse 11 the Bible says and this is Jacob talking he says deliver me I pray from the hand of my brother from the hand of Esau watch this for I fear him lest he come and attack me and the mother with the children verse 12 for you said I will surely treat you well and make your descendants as the sand of the sea which cannot be numbered for multitude so fear he needs a breakthrough uh, Jacob is afraid of dying he's afraid of confrontation why am I saying all of these things to you well right now we're talking about struggles um, we're talking about struggles with God and we're talking about struggles with ourselves and many times we are struggling even as believers with fear we're struggling with issues we're struggling with the past uh, we may be struggling with the present uh, we are concerned about our futures and we're concerned to the point that sometimes and I I can imagine here that uh, uh, Jacob is feeling some kind of anxiety right uh, uh, and so he talks to God and he is asking for deliverance he is asking for a breakthrough he is asking for God to intervene so so he needs this thing he needs this deliverance in such a desperate way it causes him to struggle with God it causes him to contend with God and I don't know if you've ever been in that position in your life that you just kept talking to God that you wouldn't take no for an answer and that God needed to come quickly uh, to save you uh, 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 and, 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 and I, I was 
thinking about this thing and, and, and Jacob says, I'm afraid of him, right? I'm afraid of what he might do. And many times when we talk to God, we have a fear about circumstances. We have a fear about issues in our lives. We have a fear about being embarrassed. We have a fear about all of these different things. And so I'm just laying the foundation here. So when we see how God reacts to uh, 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 to Jacob, we will understand uh, 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 what he is going through and how perplexed he is in his spirit that he needs God's help right away. So I want to read this Genesis chapter 32 uh, verses 22 through 26. I want to read this from the NIV translation. The Bible says that night Jacob got up, took his two wives his two female servants and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. Uh, verse 23, and after he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Verse 25, and when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Verse 26. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Right? So now we get some understanding here that God is responding to Jacob's circumstance. And there's a lot of uh, discussion about who this man is. Was it, a, uh, uh, was it God? Was it an angel? Uh, 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 who actually was this divine individual that Jacob uh, wrestled with? But many times, and, and you know, after we settle that, what we are wrestling with or what we are struggling with God is about his will, right? Uh, uh, we struggle with God about uh, what decision he is going to make about our situation. We wrestle with God because we are afraid of what might happen. And so Jacob is in a position now after he's done these things. And can you imagine some 20 years ago he did this thing to his brother and it's still active. It's still alive in his spirit. It's still in his spirit. It's still in his system. He has to address it. So 20 years and all of this time has gone by and Jacob is still struggling with it, right? And so he asks God uh, uh, for help. And so now that God responds, this divine individual shows up and, and it engages Jacob in a struggle in a wrestling match if you will we don't know how they were struggling uh, 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 but you can imagine Jacob holding on for dear life right isn't that the case right when we have issues in our lives we're holding on for dear life and we're going to talk to you a little bit about what it means that when when God touched him what 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 does this symbolize right that God uh, 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 wrestles with Jacob and uh, uh, Jacob is struggling so with the divine will of God with this man uh, 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 with the plans of God and, and, and Jacob is is convinced and is determined that he is not going to let go right I am not going to let go. So we're just going to keep tussling back and forth. Uh, uh, but I want us to understand here that God dislocated Jacob's hip. Right? It's, it's like the wrestler's pivot of strength. So having previously depended upon his wits as a schemer uh, uh, and as a trickster, uh, and uh, and you know and even in his own strength that Jacob's natural powers were crippled. Every step 
he would take in the future would remind him of his dependence upon divine grace right so this is why uh, many times God uh, uh, does not do the things that that we would like for him to do and so in this account here uh, 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 after Jacob has been scheming uh, to appease Esau with material gifts Jacob sent his wives children and possessions across the Jabbok River a tributary of the Jordan River during the night it was a, a hazardous to cross this river at night but Jacob took the risk to ensure his family's safety his fear of Esau's payback for wrongs he inflicted on him blinded him to the presence and the promise of God's angel army on his side right so an internal struggle or sickness during uh, uh, the night is a frightening experience especially when you are all alone so Jacob is now alone and afraid and was in a position where the only place to turn was to God and he knew about uh, uh, God knew uh, but he did not uh, or Jacob knew but he really uh, uh, did not truly know what was going on so there was no retreat and no turning big, uh, uh, back because Jacob had burned a bridge with Laban for Jacob going forward meant confronting the brother he suspected was coming for revenge this is a this is a horrible situation to be in when you've done wrong right to have to clean up that mess right but 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 I like the fact that that even when we go before God in prayer we have to understand that God's will for that particular matter is going to be done and so we have to trust him uh, uh, God had already promised Jacob some things but it didn't mean that Jacob wouldn't have to go through some things right we we take sometimes for granted the fact that we are blessed to indicate that we are never going to have to uh, go through anything and that is just not the case so something has to trigger and allow us to understand that going forward or in the future that we must depend on God in these particular matters and so it's okay when we go in prayer not to let go right to to contend with God to to to, to perform a miracle in our lives but understand this trials and circumstances come for all of us whether we are saved or not and so what these things should tell us and teach us is that we need God on our side right so God met Jacob where he was to lift him to where he wanted him to be and this is the part about struggling with God that sometimes uh, 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 goes off the radar if you will God has a plan for our lives. God has already determined what he wants out of us. And there is no escape. Right? Have you ever asked God for something or to do a particular thing one way and he did it the other way? And sometimes we become discouraged in our prayers because we think that God has forsaken. No, God has a plan. So, but God met Jacob right where he was so an assailant attacked Jacob and wrestled with him until daybreak the fight was real right it was physical and designed to make Jacob aware that he was wrestling against and resisting God's will for his life that's huge we could spend all day looking into this particular matter and I would just ask you two questions do you know do you know why you were created do you know that and then the second question is are you performing or functioning 
in that created order. You have to address that in your life. You have to address that as a believer. You have to know that. And many times we are struggling with God against the purposes that he have designed for our lives. And we are pulling against the grain, if you will. And God is pushing back saying, no, God is saying, this is the way, this is the way I want you to go. And even after 20 years of, of, of all of this uh, uh, infighting, family dysfunction, family feuds, all of these different kind of things, it's still not over. Time didn't cure it, right? It's still relevant in Jacob's life. So Jacob defended himself and refused to concede defeat. His adversary intended to weaken and break Jacob's stubborn will in order to bless him, right? And that's what God does. He breaks us down in a way, right? Because we are stubborn. We are, uh, 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 if, if I can use this phrase, we are hell bent on doing it the way we want to do it. And God has said no. And we keep going in prayer and keep contending and struggling with God as though he has not spoken to us. Right? So God often has to break us to fix us when we persist in going our way. Right? So this was a supernatural blow to Jacob. Right? It crippled Jacob and gave his foe the advantage but Jacob refused to let go and held on for a blessing. Jacob's demand for a blessing indicated the realization that God's blessings come through an intimate relationship with him not crafty deception and unnecessary manipulation. God's going to get to the real you right? God wants this dependency. God, this is, the, this is the reality, right? This relationship is real with God, right? Jacob had promised God to do that he was going to be a certain way, that God was going to be his God. But you got to live that. <laughs> you, that, that. That's a reality. That's something you're going to have to experience. Watch this day by day. So we cannot fool God about who we are and we cannot fool God about his will this wrestling match was initiated by God for Jacob's good for most of his life watch this Jacob had managed to get by without facing his own flawed character I want to just pause there sometimes when we go in prayer and we offer things to God. Sometimes we only offer God what's in one hand. Right? But God is interested about what's in both hands. In other words, we have to come clean with God about who we are and what we have done. Right? And be prepared to deal with it based on how God wants to deal with it. Right? So you can't manipulate God. So Jacob is in a position. He's got to not only face his brother. He's got to face God. And he's got to face who he is. He has to look in the mirror and say, okay, I'm the guy that made these mistakes. And this is what I need to do about it. So God will permit spiritual struggles in our lives and encourage us while forcing us to realize our need for him. Our wrestling matches may not be physical, but persistence, persistent perseverance, prevailing prayer, and fasting are necessary until God's will for our lives is clear. Remember those two questions. Do you know why you are on this earth? Do you know why you were created? Do you know what God intends for your life? And, and are you about your father's business? You're going to have to address that. Right? Who we are in the body of Christ is individual. But yet it's corporate. 
we are responsible for being the members and functioning as the members are supposed to function. And then all of these particular functions comprise the body of Christ. None of us are the head, but we have individual functions. And God has crafted these things in his will. And they will be done. So I hope that I, I just I just want to talk to you about this thing because this is a this is something that I believe we all uh, uh, have to contend with at some times. Uh, so how do struggles lead to deeper spiritual insight and a more meaningful relationship with God when accepted from his perspective? From his perspective. So what does God want? All right? In many times when, when we are in prayer, we are telling God what he should do. All right? But if you turn that thing around, what is God telling you to do? That's something you have to deal with. All right, so let's move on to our second outline. And, and again, uh, reading, reading this narrative of Jacob's life will help us to understand that, that this is a pivotal point in his life that he has never had to face, right, in terms of God touching him, right? Uh, 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 and uh, and God is preventing him from pivoting the way that he wants to pivot but God has turned him in a direction where only God can help him alright struggling with self this is taken from Genesis chapter 32 verses 27 through 32 and again I want to read this from the NIV translation the Bible said the man asked him what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Verse 29, Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob uh, called that place Peniel saying it is because I saw God face to face and yet my life was spared verse 31 the sun rose above him as he passed Peniel and he was limping because of his hip therefore to this day the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon that pivotal point that pivot right that wrestler seemed to have uh, 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 and gain some strength right but Jacob wanted to know who he was wrestling with many times right he didn't get the answer he wanted right he got a question to his question isn't that like God right that's above your pay grade you don't need to know who I am right like that but you need to know my purposes for your life but he changed his name right God changed his identity God changed his past right this is the whole purpose of getting to know Jesus in a personal way this is the whole idea behind a relationship uh, with God through Jesus Christ because we need a transformation God knows who we used to be God knows what we used to do and God is endeavoring to change that and so what he is doing uh, uh, with Jacob is changing that makeup that old nature that he had and giving him a new identity a new purpose right a new direction you are not going to be like this anymore and I know you're going to remember who you're supposed to be because you'll be limping for the rest of your days and you will always remember that this is where I touched you this is how I caused you this is where your dependency begins this is where the realization 
of who I am impacts your mindset and your attitude that now you're pivoting toward me. You're not pivoting to your own strength or to your to the direction of your own devices. But now your direction is turning toward me. But he wrestled with God, right? And so this is what happens to us. All of us that say we are saved, right? Can I say something to you? You should be limping, right? You should have a limp. In other words, you should have a dependency now that you didn't have before because the Lord touched you, right? Touched you where you were vulnerable. Touched you where you had uh, uh, that prideful attitude. Touched you in a place where you thought you could do it on your own. And now, because he has touched us, he has caused us to be dependent. And that's a good thing. That's good. If you have if you have a limp as a Christian, that's good. I don't mean that uh, uh, physically. I mean that spiritually. I mean that in a way that your direction now is focused on God. That your dependency is like a child to his daddy. Right? And this is what God has done. So now Jacob can go forward. Right? Jacob can go forward. Jacob can go forward in the will of God. He can go forward in the purposes of God. God has answered. So this situation is going to be all right. Right? Jacob's going to make it. He's going to be okay because the Lord has blessed him, not just for the circumstance, but for the rest of his life so he can be a witness. Because you got to limp somewhere else and you got to tell others what I did for you. So I want you to limp over there and tell them that it was me that caused you to be who you are today. That it's me that gave you a new name. That it's me that gave you a new purpose. That it's me that gave you uh, all the things that we say we enjoy now. And, and keep in mind, to God be the glory. That's fundamental for all of us as believers. So God wants us to understand here that uh, this disabled, the disabled, helpless deceiver is now at the point where he could do nothing but cling to God and plead to and plead to be blessed by him right his request informed God that Jacob was ready to become a submissive servant instead of a deceitful schemer and fighter that he had been right so in response to Jacob's question came another question what is your name and it was a loaded question whose purpose was to allow Jacob the opportunity to confess and acknowledge his true character. Right? We have to talk to God. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of praying this prayer. I say, Lord, help me with myself. We have to talk to God about our weaknesses don't don't show up to the throne of grace like you got it all together and you don't need nothing and you came to tell God what he should do and you walk away from the throne of grace because you don't really need nothing you don't need God for anything that's wrong that's the wrong mindset and what God needs to do is give you a limp right put you in a position where you will understand I, I believe Jesus said it in John chapter 15. Uh, he says, apart from me, ye can do nothing. And we need to understand this today. But Jacob's answer was a confession that he recognized and admitted himself to be a supplanter, a heel grabber, and a deceiver, right? Isn't that what the church is made of? We are nothing but a body of of, of people, sinners if you will, that have been saved by the grace of God and all of our paths were different. All of our destructive paths were different. God brought us from, from the north, the south, the east, and the west and we all had a, a, a different character traits, right? So we shouldn't, we shouldn't act like that, 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 that we were the one that, uh, uh, that, that, that brought ourselves over the hump. 
But we ought to be able to acknowledge that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, where would you be? And what would you be? Is a bigger question. So, but it goes on to say here, Jacob, now Israel, demonstrated a new quality of life. Not better than anybody, but God has brought a quality out of his life from deception to prevailing with God. Jacob had fought with God and men throughout his life. Uh, he was willful and proud. Now God fought against his pride and stubbornness and would fight for him in the future. His new name also foreshadowed the nation of Israel that he would generate and indicated the fulfillment of the Abrahamic promise of his descendants becoming a great nation. Right? Pride, stubbornness, right? Willful attitudes, right? This is something that God is is against, right? And so there there has to be a a, a, a breakdown, right? in our spirits. I believe Psalm fifty one would help us to understand that 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 that, that God uh he 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 doesn't walk away from uh uh that brokenness a broken spirit he wouldn't despise right so God wants us to come clean right and confess that we need him and we need to be willing to share that with God and allow him to help us right and let him create that dependency not just for the circumstance but for the course of your journey on this earth let's pray Father God in the name of Jesus we thank you for this lesson revealing uh, us to us revealing who we are in our natures revealing to us how we are in our character the flaws that we have uh, about rejecting you about being stubborn to give our lives to uh, uh, to you who are able who is completely able to keep us from falling God and I just want to lift each and every one in prayer tonight this is my story and I'm sure this is the story of uh, of, of the hearers today that we desperately need you we have all kinds of issues in our lives our family members have issues in their lives and we all need you God and we are praying that you will look and have mercy upon us today in the name of Jesus have mercy upon our attitudes that are a front against your will have mercy upon us today in the name of Jesus for rejecting the knowledge of the truth, for rejecting you, for rejecting the sacrifice of rejecting your son, the only salvation that we will ever know. God, we thank you for just giving us time to come to ourselves, giving us an opportunity to confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I just want to lift each and every one in prayer today I don't know what they're going through, but I know that you are able. I know that you are able. We count on you to keep us. We count on you to bless us. We count on you to, to see what we cannot see, to get to those issues deep and embedded in our spirits and in our hearts and minds that we just can't get it out. But you can. And we just thank you that you have all power in heaven and earth in your hands to get the job done and we just thank you for what this lesson speaks to us today that that this is our story today we thank you for uncovering us and allowing us to be covered by the precious blood of the lamb god and we'll be so careful and mindful to give your name the praise the glory and the honor in jesus name we ask and pray amen god bless you saints just know that i love you and that i'm praying for you don't be ashamed to confess to God that you need him. Go in your secret closet 
and tell God where you need him. Uh, if you need him in your eyes, if you need him in your ears, if you need him in your hands, or wherever you need him, talk to God about it and let him uh, 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 show you and demonstrate to you that he is able to keep his creation, all of it from head to toe. So until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.